My name is Jason, and this is just watches. And today we're going to be comparing the Orient Kamasu on the right with the Islander 38 millimeter on the left, and trying to determine which one of these is the value for money king in the affordable dive sector. Now, as always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the content of this individual video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Now I have reviews of both of these watches, which I'll pop up in the upper right corner if you wanna check out. Today I'll primarily be focused on the differences between them and which one, if either, I think is the value king. So let's start with the cases, starting with the Kamasu. Now on most of the watches in this price point, it's finished quite well. You have a combination of brushing on the top of the case and then high polish on the sides. There is actually not really a transition chamfer on this case, um, but it's what you would come to expect at this price point. And then the Islander is very similar. You have high polish on the sides and then a brushed finish on the top. And you do have a chamfered edge that kind of transitions the top to the side of the case. But I would say it's about a tie here. The only thing that puts the Islander a little bit ahead is it does have drilled lug holes and that's gonna make strap changes way easier for you. So there's a slight edge on the Islander when it comes to the case. So moving on to the bracelets. Now what the Kamasu bracelet has going for it is that it does have four micro positions. I think four micro positions is the magic number where you should be able to get the bracelet to fit your wrist. I think six is ideal, but I think you can do it with four. Less than four, you might start to run into problems. Other than that, um, there's some negatives about this bracelet in general. It does have just a pressed metal clasp. These don't really bother me at this price point, but I know some people like to see that milled clasp. And then it also has hollow end links. Again, I'm not too set on having solid end links at this price point, but that is something to keep in mind. And then the last two items that are sort of negatives are that the bracelet doesn't taper very much. It only tapers two millimeters. So it's quite chunky overall, the watch itself on the bracelet. If it had a more significant taper, I think it would wear a little bit better. And then I guess this is a neutral, but it just utilizes the split pins for sizing. You can do those usually. They're just a little bit harder than some of the other systems, like what you're gonna see on the Islander. So the Islander bracelet is gonna have a few more things going for it. First, it has the same kind of clasp where it's a double push to plant with a keeper, but it does have a milled scissor clasp, which people like to see and does make it a little bit sturdier on the wrist. You do have solid end links, and then you have a significant taper on this bracelet. It does taper four millimeters, which just kind of makes it lighter, less chunky, and more comfortable overall, in my opinion, on the wrist. And then for sizing, it does utilize screw links, which makes sizing really a snap. You just need a screwdriver that's about one millimeter, maybe 1.5 millimeter, and you can just take the screws out and size very quickly that way. It's quite easy even if you don't have a lot of experience sizing bracelets. On the downside, the end links are quite long. They add to the overall lug to lug distance of the watch just because they don't fold over and they protrude out. It's something to keep in mind. It's not a problem on this watch for me because it's only 38 millimeters, but just keep that in mind in general. And then finally, there's only three micro positions. I think you want a minimum of four to get the ideal size. I was lucky I got this to fit quite right, but three micro positions makes me a little nervous for some wrists, they might not be able to get the perfect fit. So this is another thing to keep in mind on this bracelet. So that brings us to the crowns. Now the crown on the Orient Kamasu is signed, which I like to see, and it is screw down, which is nice on a dive watch. However, I think it's a little bit too small. It's really tucked away between those crown guards and I have trouble screwing it in without using something like my shirt or a piece of cloth to really get it to tighten all the way. So I think it's fine, but I would really like to see them make the crown bigger. And then on the Islander, it's kind of a similar situation. You have a small crown that is tucked away between these crown guards. However, I am able to screw it all the way in without using my shirt or another piece of cloth. So I don't think it's too small, but I would like to see it maybe a tiny bit bigger in future iterations. And then it is signed with the Islander logo, which is very cool and something I always like to see. So moving on to the crystals. Now you do have a sapphire crystal on the Kamasu. And as far as I know, I don't think it has AR coating on there. You can correct me if it's wrong, but it does seem to catch glare kind of no matter what angle you point it at. Now the Islander crystal is a double domed sapphire. And I don't know if you can tell, but it is treated with AR. And you can kind of see it's a little bit easier to see the dial. It catches a little bit less reflections 
from the light around in this room. So that is something that makes it a little bit nicer than the crystal in my opinion. So as far as the hands, the indices, and the dial, I think both of these watches got it right. I really like to see a long second hand and a long minute hand. On many watches, those two hands just fall a little bit too short and they don't feel right for the watch. But when a watch has a really well sized minute and second hand that kind of fills the whole dial. It feels more cohesive to me overall. It's just something I like to see. And then you have nice applied indices and then the defect of the dial is just great on this watch. It's this deep ruby red that in different lighting conditions it just takes on different uh, color effects and you can see it has a sunburst effect when it is caught by direct light. So a really knockout package here on the dial and the hands and the indices. And we're kind of in the exact same situation for the Islander. A really nice long second hand, a really nice long minute hand. It's filling the whole dial. And I love that they did the red stop on the seconds hand. Now these indices in the hands are kind of a homage to the Marine Master. And I really like the way they were executed. They're nicely applied. The hands are great. And then look at the dial. The dial has this wonderful sunburst effect. It's actually very similar to the Kamasu in that in depending on the different lighting conditions, it appears different. And you can see when it does catch direct light, you really get that sunbursting effect out from the middle of the dial there. And then I do have to mention that they did a great job matching the bezel green, the chapter ring green, and the dial green. So overall, the dial, hands, and indices on this watch are also pretty much a knockout in my opinion. Now both these watches feature a 120 click unidirectional bezel and I like the action on both of them. They're both easy to turn and I really, I think they're about equal. They're a little bit easier to turn than say, I find some bezels quite stiff and that's not the case here. You have a nice kind of smooth consistent action throughout all the way around the dial and then the alignment on this watch is good between the 12 o'clock indice, the chapter ring, and then the pip on the bezel. So they did a great job there. Now the same is true of the Islander. Really nice bezel action. It's totally different. And it's one of these things that's very difficult to describe bezel action. All I can say is I really like operating the bezels on these two watches. And that is not true of all watches you come across. Sometimes they're just too stiff and it makes them difficult to turn or there's something not pleasant about the action. But the action on both of these watches is really nice. If I had to pick one, I'd probably actually give it to the Islander, but I enjoy the bezel action on both of these watches. And then here you do have alignment between the pip on the bezel, the chapter ring, and that 12 o'clock indice. So great job on the alignment on both these watches. So both these watches have what I would consider weapons grade loom. Very bright, very responsive. It's the kind of loom that if you go out for even 10 seconds in the sunlight, you come back in, you have that nice bright glow of loom. So I've charged both these up and I'm just gonna let them run down and you can see they both hold a charge really well, but obviously there's a, the loomed bezel on the Islander just takes it to the next level. I love what they did with the loom bezel and how it's under that sapphire surface. So it's not really gonna scratch and it was just well executed overall. So I think I have to give it slightly to the Islander on the loom here. So then as far as the movements, the Orient's gonna have its in-house F6922. That's a 21,600 vibration per hour, hacking and hand winding movement. This one has the day and the date. So you have a very similar movement in the Islander. It's the non-branded Seiko NH36. It's that same 21,600 vibration per hour, hacking and hand winding, and then you have the day and the date. So they're very comparable then on the movements. So then the final consideration is really just the price. Now the Kamasu you can pick up for about $220, and the Islander is gonna be $300 on Long Island watch. Now the Islander is about $80 more, but you are getting a nicer bracelet and that loomed bezel. And those are really the things that set it above and beyond the Kamasu. However, I think if you really like the Kamasu, you can go ahead and get an aftermarket strap code bracelet on it, 
And then it's really kind of bringing it up to parity, both in price and overall to the Islander. Because those strap code bracelets, they're pretty expensive. I think they're about $60 to $80. So it's going to put you at about the same price point as the Islander. However, the Islander is still going to have that loomed bezel. So I really do actually think the Islander has an edge here on overall value for what you're getting for the money. If you're not too worried about the bracelet and you want to save $80 to $100, then you could definitely go with the Kamasu. But if you do want that nicer bracelet and that loomed bezel, I think it's very hard to beat the Islander at this price point. So I think these are both knockout choices and probably some of the best money, value for money that you can get at this price point in dive watches. So I would say go with either of the one that, you know, speaks to you more or has maybe the color that you like more or the size even. So there are a lot of different Islanders. They come in a lot of different sizes. The Kamasu is 41 millimeters. There's not any other sizes, um, choice of sizes in that line. All right, you guys, that'll do it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you prefer the Islander or the Kamasu, considering the price? Or maybe there's another watch between two and $300, a dive watch that you think can challenge one of these great contenders. If so, just let me know in the comments. I do have a review of both these watches that you can see on my site. Other than that, I'll leave you there and see you next time.